Welcome back to MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic. In today's video, we are going to unbox the Undead Unleashed Pre-Constructed Commander deck from Innistrad Midnight Hunt. We're going to take a deep look at the cards inside, and we're going to see if within this deck we have the single greatest zombie commander that may have ever been printed. What's up, MTGBC? That is the MTG Burgeoning Community. Today we are going to unbox this pre-constructed Undead Unleashed Zombie Commander deck from Innistrad Midnight Hunt. We're going to take a look at the cards inside. We're going to see what kind of value. We're going to see what kind of power. And then we're going to talk about Will Helt. Will Helt the Rot Cleaver is a two blue and a black for a 3-3 zombie warrior. Whenever another zombie you control dies, if it didn't have decayed, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token with decayed. The first thing that jumps out to me is that says whenever another zombie. It doesn't say whenever another non-token zombie. And let's be honest, we have so many ways to create zombie tokens. So that's the first thing that catches my eye is that Will Health says whenever another zombie you control dies, create another zombie token. Now, granted, that has decayed. But do we care? I don't think we do because of what we can do with blue and black. And then the last uh, wall of text at the bottom, at the beginning of your end step, you may sacrifice a zombie. If you do, draw a card. So we can just trade in zombies for cards. Will Health the Rock Cleaver, is he going to take the place of the Scarab God as the best zombie commander? Ooh, that's a conversation for us to have. But first, we got some cracking to do here. We need to open up this box. We need to get some cards in our hands. We just have to get going here. We need some new cards in our hands. Let's do it. All right, that doesn't come out. Um, all right, we'll put that over to the side because we're just about the cards right now. Let's see, we got our box. Nothing different. We got our spin down counter. Okay, we're just going to slide that over. Because it's the cards that we want right now. All right, there's Will Help. The foiling looks good here. Now, there have been some some recent unboxings of the pre-constructed commander decks that we've done here that the foiling just did not look good on those commander cards. But here, so far, through the plastic wrap at least, it's looking okay. So let's get these cards up. Liberate these from its plastic prison. Yeah, that looks good. It does not look faded. It looks good. Good job. All right. So that's Will Helt. That's who we were talking about at the beginning of the video. So you are definitely going right into the awesome to discuss later pile. And this is our second foil legend. This is Eloise Nefalia Sleuth. So this is a human rogue for three and Demir. Four, four body. Whenever another creature we control dies, investigate. Whoa, that seems really strong. Holy mackerel. Any creature. Again, it doesn't say non-token. It just says whenever another creature you control dies, investigate. Wow, that's really strong. Whenever you sacrifice a token, surveil one. Whoa, wow, that is, ooh, Eloise, you are strong with the force. Holy mackerel, you're going to go right out there with Wilhelm. Wow, those are two awesome, awesome power. Wow, the power, whenever another creature die, you control dies, investigate. Whenever you sacrifice a token, surveil one. So you could, in effect, get a token into the graveyard, which we'll say a creature token, we'll say a zombie creature token, and then you're going to investigate, and then you're also going to surveil one. Wow, so you could potentially stack the triggers in a way so that you can see what you're going to draw before you draw it, or put that into the graveyard. That is very strong. Wow. Holy mackerel. Very good. Wow, each of those commanders are pretty strong. Wow. Okay. All right, reprint. Oh, just so good to see Distant Melody in this deck. I mean, it, that's one of those cards that whenever I sit down to do a tribal deck, I'm looking, oh, where's my copy? Do I have a copy of Distant Melody? 
and I I always either have to forego it or cannibalize a different deck. So this is nice to throw into the coffer. So you go over here into the into the good to see you reprinted pile. All right, Eternal Sky Lord. That's for more of the spark. Okay, Corpse Augur. That's another reprint. Feed the Swarm reprint. Okay, Flashbag Marauder. Greatest name ever. Good to see you reprinted. All right, go for the Throat. Liliana's Devotee. Lord of the Accursed, one of our zombie lords. All right, Spark Reaper. Sacrifice a creature or Planeswalker. Gain a life, draw a card. Well, all right, meh. Siphon Flash, that's not anything new. Undead Augur, whatever another, okay, die one another card. Another Zombie Lord with Diagraph Captain. Alrighty, Gleaming Overseer for more of the Spark. Alright, Ruthless Death Fang, another. Okay, uh, there's our Arcane Signet, always great to see you. Charcoal Diamond. Commander Sphere, Sky Diamond, there's our Soul Ring. Ooh, Talisman of Dominance. They put that in here. Very good reprint. You are going right over there with those other Choice Artifact Ramp. All right, Bajuka Bog, there's our Command Tower. Best land in the set. I'm sorry, best land in the format, I should say. Uh, Mortuary Mire, okay, Myriad Landscape, right, Path to Ancestry, Underrated, I think, Tainted Isle, love the Tainted set, Unclaimed Territory, that'll be great for uh, Tribal, alright, what's this, Clever Scab, alright, this is actually, I think, in the Midnight Hunt set, I thought it was, but maybe not, nope, Mid -hunt, Midnight Hunt Commander, because okay, so this is just a specific Commander card, so three Sacrifice Another Zombie, Create two tokens that are copies of the sacrificed creature. Whoa, that seems really strong. Sacrifice a zombie lord to put two into play. Ooh, yeah, you're pretty sweet. We'll put you right there with the commanders. What's this? Curse of Unbinding Seven. Six and blue for an aura? Oh, man, this better be sweet. At the beginning of Enchanted Player's Upkeep, that player reveals cards from the top of the library until they reveal a creature card. Put that card onto the battlefield under your control. That player puts the rest of the reveal cards into their graveyard. Arr. That could be troublesome for anyone going Spell Slinger. Ah, that, that just the randomness of this card seems like it could be a little trouble because you never know who's playing what creatures in which decks and whether it's even worth to invest seven mana. I mean, it would be nice to fill the graveyard, but you're not filling them with creatures. Eh, I'm not so keen on Curse of Unbinding. I'll put you over. Uh, I'll just put you here. I know you're new. You're going to go right there. Not so keen on that card. All right. Drown in Dreams. X and two blue. Choose one. If you control a commander as you cast the spell, you may choose both. Okay, so target player draws X cards or target player mills twice X cards. Okay, so we got we got a card that you can use just to fill your hand. You can use this to really mill an opponent, or you can do both if you have a commander in play. I would like to take this card right out of this pre-constructed deck and stick this right into a Zaxara build. Because this, to me, is a better Stroke of Genius. Stroke of Genius is exactly the same thing, X and two blue, and, you know, target player draws X cards. However, it doesn't have the other condition as if we control a commander, we can also have target player mill two cards. So this would be sweet in Zaxara. This would be sweet in Lazav. Yeah, I think I would put this card definitely in Zaxara, definitely in Lazav. That's a really strong card. All right, empty the laboratory. X and two blue, sacrifice X zombies, then reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a number of zombie cards equal to the number of zombies sacrificed this way. Whoa, put those cards onto the battlefield. Holy mackerel. Wow, and it doesn't say non-token zombies. It just says sacrifice X zombies. So if you were to sit down and draw out... A particular type of deck where you have many spells and effects and abilities that can create zombie creature tokens and then you load your library you load the deck with super powerful zombies and then you find a way in which to get empty the laboratory into your hand cast it sacrifice those tokens 
and then get some of those super powerful zombie cards out onto the battlefield. Wow, that card seems really strong. Man, the, the, some of the new cards in this deck, in this pre-constructed deck, are ridiculously strong. It can't just be me. I mean, we're five out of six of the new cards here, and I think they are all really good. Wow, that's something else. All right, Horde Wing Scab. Other zombies you control have flying. That's better than the Skylord Eternal, which was one of the blue zombies that had the amass mechanic from War of the Spark, because that just gave zombie tokens flying. This gives all your zombies flying. Four and a blue on a 3-3 three, three flying zombie horror. Okay. Whenever one or more zombies you control deal combat damage to one or more of your opponents, you may draw cards equal to the number of opponents dealt damage this way. If you do, discard that many cards. Eh, that's, that's okay. You can get some cards, do some looting. That's, I mean, that's pretty good. The, the flying zombies, that is really strong. Oh man, this is... This deck is really bringing the powerful new cards here. All right, we got Shadow Ken. Oh, we got a flashing shapeshifter. Three in a blue for two, two. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player mills three cards. You may exile a creature card from among the cards milled this way. If you do, Shadow Ken becomes a copy of that card, except it has this ability. So this is kind of like a Lazav type of card. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player mills three cards. You may exile a creature card. Wow, that's pretty sweet. So if you're so for the purposes of building this is uh, building a zombie deck, if you're not so concerned of filling your own graveyard with zombies, then maybe Shadowkin may not be the best card to include. However, in my mind, the first place this card went to was Lazav. Flash this in with Lazav in play. It has a trigger that mills nine cards, at least nine, nine, 12, 15 cards, depending on how many players are at the table, just by being on the battlefield. And then it has the Lazav ability of copying that card. Yeah, I would put Shadowkin right in the Lazav deck. Wow, that's another really strong one. All right, pretty good. Pretty good. All right, what's this? Crowded Crypt. <laughs> okay, Crowded Crypt. We had an artifact here for two and a black. Tap for a black. Whenever a creature you control dies, put a corpse counter on Crowded Crypt. Immediately, I'm already intrigued because it doesn't say non-token creature. Whenever it says whenever a non-token creature you control dies, my interest starts to wane a bit because, let's be honest, tokens are pretty sweet to have. So we have an artifact here that says whenever a creature you control dies, put a corpse counter on Crowded Crypt. Tap four and two black, tap sacrifice Crowded Crypt, create a two two black zombie creature token with decayed for each corpse counter on Crowded Crypt. And I have to tell you, I love the fact that this does not say do only as a sorcery. I don't think that would be a very good card at all if it said do only as a sorcery. But considering you can EOT this at the end of your opponent's turn, yeah, all right. All right, I'm, I'm down with the Crowded Crypt. You're in the, in the really good new pile. All right, that's a pretty sweet card. What do we have here? Now we have another Curse. Curse of the Restless Dead, two and a black enchant player. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under enchanted player's control, you create a 2-2 black zombie creature token with Decayed. <sighs> yeah, um, that's really strong early game. That's not something I want to draw in the mid to late game. Particularly if we're getting down to the point where top decking is so important. Drawing this card... Uh, Early game, though, that's pretty sweet. Um, for the purposes of... Eh, I think we'll put that with Curse of Unbinding. Maybe I'm just anti-curse. The auras, I don't know. I just That one just seems okay to me. All right, Ghoul's Night Out, three and two black. For each player, choose a creature card in that player's graveyard. Put those cards onto the battlefield under your control. They're black zombies in addition to... They're other colors, and they gain Decayed. Wow, that kind of takes away their power a bit. Well, I mean, it's still a mass recursion spell for just the investment of five mana. That could still be pretty good. We can't block with them, and then when we attack, they have to be sacrificed at the end of combat because they have Decayed. Uh, Ghoul's Night Out, just okay. 
just okay. The artwork is epic, though. I, I will definitely give the artist there. Um, can't really make out the name. Setuan. Fetter, Fetterica Setuan. A very good artwork there. Card level, power level. Meh. All right. Gorex the Tomb Shell. Look at this zombie turtle. Looks like he has a mausoleum on its shell. Six and two black for a 4-4. Four, four. As an additional cost to cast the spell, you may exile any number of creature cards from your graveyard. Okay, the spell costs two less to cast for each card exiled this way. Whenever Gorex the Tomb Shell attacks or dies, choose a card at random exile with Gorex and put that card into its owner's hand. Uh, I don't know. Um... So at, at its best, we can exile three cards from the graveyard to pay two black mana for a 4-4 four, four Death Toucher. If it gets lit up immediately, we return one of those creature cards at random from, our, from exile to our hand. Honestly, I probably want the zombies to have the ability or the creature cards because, let's face it, if it's a zombie deck, the, the creatures are going to be zombies. I think I would want the flexibility of having them in the graveyard and being able to bring them back to my hand, back to the battlefield, send them to the graveyard, as opposed to leaving some of them in exile. So, I don't know. Gorex? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm not so hot on you, Gorex. All right, what do you got here? Prowling Geist Catcher. Three and a black for a human rogue. Whenever you sacrifice another creature, oh, there it is. It's a not, it doesn't say non token. Whenever you sacrifice another creature, exile it. If that creature was a token, put a plus one, plus one counter on Prowling Geist Catcher. So we're going to reward this human rogue by putting a plus one, plus one counter on it whenever we sacrifice a token creature. Okay. When Prowling Geist Catcher leaves the battlefield, return each card exiled with it to the battlefield under your control. Whoa. Wow. Okay, that seems pretty sweet. And it says, oh, the best part about this is that it says it has to leave the battlefield. It doesn't have to die, so we don't risk the creatures being exiled forever if one, if one of our opponents exiles this creature. That seems really strong with an out with an outside sacrifice outlet. We can get those creatures to the battlefield. Wow, that seems really good. Whenever you sacrifice another creature, yeah, I think this definitely has some some staying power. Prowling Geist Catcher. Okay, yeah, you've got me convinced. I like the interaction you could have right there with the creatures coming into going into exile and coming back into play, and all that has to do is leave the battlefield. It doesn't have to die. Okay, very good. Very strong. Ah, not a zombie, though. That one hurts a little bit. <laughs> From a flavor standpoint, the Vorthos in me wants to make sure that if I'm playing with a zombie deck, I want the creatures to be zombies. I don't want a human rogue in my zombie deck, so oh, that one hurts me a little bit. From the flavor standpoint. All right, moving forward. Ravenous Rot Belly. For in a black, when the CTBs, you may sacrifice up to three zombies. Okay, so they can be token, they can be non-token. When you sacrifice one or more zombies this way, each opponent sacrifices that many creatures. Ooh, okay. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. This is like a, a miniaturized um, Dictate of Erebus or Grave Pact effect. So we cast for five, put this bad boy into play for a four or five, say we'll sacrifice three of our two two zombie tokens. Each of our opponents sacrifices three creatures. Yeah, that seems pretty good. You would be a very good addition to a zombie deck. All right, what do you got here? Tomb Tyrant, three and a black. Oh, it's a lord for a mana value of four. I'm not, I'm not on board with uh, four CMC mana lords. I want my lords to be three or less. So you better have you better bring something in your uh, wall of text here, Tomb Tyrant, because you're only a three three. Two and a black, sacrifice a creature, return a zombie creature card at random from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate only during your turn, and only if there are at least three zombie creature cards in your graveyard, you are poop. I I want nothing to do with the Tomb Tyrant. You can only do it during your turn. It's randomized. Your mana value is inflated to be a lord. You're only a 3-3 with no other uh, keyword effects. Nope, you would not make it into my deck. 
All right, so it looks like we're back here with some reprints. We've got Ether Sprouts, okay, for each attacking creature. Put it on top or bottom of its owner's library. Forgotten Creation, that's from uh, the Shadows over Innistrad Eldritch Moon bl Block. Skulk, love it. Havengald Rune Binder. Two and a blue exile a creature card from your graveyard. Create a 2-2 black zombie creature, then put a plus one, plus one counter on each zombie you control. I guess it depends on which of our zombies is getting exiled from the graveyard, because like I said earlier in this video, I don't want all my, my zombie creature cards to get exiled. I want them in the graveyard rotting away until they're summoned to the battlefield through one of our many recursion spells. <clears throat> Hour of Eternity, XX Triple Blue... Exile X target creature cards from your graveyard. For each card, exile this way. Create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's a 4-4 black zombie. See, again, here we are. We're exiling our strong zombie creature cards to put tokens into play, which once they die, they're gone forever. Eh, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of Hour of Eternity. Ah, Rooftop Storm. That's a very good that's a very good reprint spell. Good, good. Stitcher Giralf. Very awesome. Three and double blue. Three, four. Tap two and a blue. Tap Stitcher Giralf. And each player mills three cards. Exile up to two creature cards put into graveyards this way. Create an XX blue zombie creature token where X is the total power of the cards exiled this way. Love the flavor of this. Don't love the mana value. Don't love that it's only a 3-4 and the randomness of investing the 2 and a blue and maybe not hitting anything good. Maybe you're hitting just a Birds of Paradise and then you're completely whiffing. Er, not the biggest fan. Oh, Undead Alchemist. Love what this guy can do. This is a great way in which to mill players and just amass a huge zombie army. That's the best thing about the zombie decks is you don't necessarily have to create the deck and win via combat. There's so many tricky ways in which to earn win conditions when you're playing in Demir, particularly if you have a tribe like the zombies. And the Undead Alchemist is one of those creatures that really will make those alternate win conditions become really, really oppressive. Oh, of course, you got to have Army of the Damned. That's an awesome reprint there. Uh, Butcher of Malak here. <clears throat> I'm not, I've never been a fan of uh, the mana value of 7. I mean, that's a 5-4 flyer, which isn't that great. It does have the Grave Pact and Dictate of Erebus mechanic. I suppose this may be considered the budget option of those two enchantments, but still a mana value of 7 is just so much to invest. All right, there's, there's one of the lords I'm talking about. Three mana value, plus one, plus one. And yeah, you can exile the creature cards from a graveyard, which is a lot better than our graveyard. That is a mechanic that I would like to see more than just having to exile from our own graveyard. Cemetery Reaper, for me, is a lot more valuable of a lord than the lords that say exile the creature card from your graveyard. Let's deny our opponents their uh, buried creatures so that we can make our own zombie tokens from their creatures and not ours. Dark Salvation, you gotta like that card. It's a nice XX uh, token spell maker. Token spell maker? <laughs> spell token maker? Something like that. You guys can fit the words in the, in the proper <laughs> syntax for me. Here's, here's another great example of a mana value 3 lord, the Death Baron. They're going to give our zombies plus one, plus one, and Death Touch. Dire Graph Colossus. So awesome. Such an awesome card. ETBs with a plus one, plus one counter on it for each zombie card in our graveyard. And whenever we cast a spell, we're putting a 2-2 zombie token into play. It's tapped, but still, the value of continuously getting those tokens whenever we cast spells. And that's only for two and a black. Great, great zombie, the Dire Graph Colossus is. Dread Summons, the Mass Mill card. Okay, that's a good one too. Very nice. Dread Horde Invasion. This is Bitter Blossom Light, but this is just for the this is just for the creation of our zombie army. So that's a pretty good card to include in this deck. Nice. Eater of Hope. What's this? I'm not familiar with Eater of Hope. Five and two black, six for flyer. Tap a black, sacrifice another creature, regenerate this dude. 
Tap two in a black, sacrifice two other creatures, destroy target creature. Whoa, that seems really good. Holy mackerel. Yeah, that will work very well. Tap three, sacrifice two of our zombie tokens, destroy target creature. Love it. Love the fact that it sacrificed another creature. Again, it doesn't say sacrifice another non-token creature. Plus, love that it says destroy target creature. It doesn't say destroy target non-black creature. Those are both functions that you see a lot of times in black cards. Glad it's not on either of Hope. That's a really good creature. Endless Ranks of the Dead. That's a great card to put in there. Grave Spawn Sovereign. Tap five zombies you control to put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. The investment of the of six mana for a 3-3 three, three that you have to utilize additional creatures to tap just to unearth a creature from a graveyard. Hmm, I don't know if tapping down, if tapping five of our dudes would be enough to bring back anything of that much value from our graveyard. Our opponents may have something, but I'm not so sure that we would. Whoa, Lily is in this deck. All right, Liliana, that's majesty. Oh, majesty. Well, there's a welcome reprint. Very nice, Lily. Oh, okay, Liliana's Mastery. Of course, you have to have that in a zombie deck. Midnight Reaper. This one always scares me. It really does. I like that it's whenever a non-token creature you control dies. For this time, I enjoy that it's non-token and not any and not any creature because that could really add up quickly, taking the one point of damage. All right, open the graves. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, create a 2-2 black zombie creature. See, for me, investment of five mana, meh. Overseer of the Damned is pretty sweet. <clears throat> I wish that were whenever a creature an opponent controls dies as opposed to a non-token. But still, it does help us to generate mana, or to generate black zombie creature tokens. Of course, zombie apocalypse. Jisa and Giralf. Okay, good to see that they're here. Reprint. And it looks like we're getting to our lands now. Choked Estuary, Dark okay, Exotic Orchard. Always a good card, that, those Exotic Orchards. Sunken Hollow. You know, the Battlelands, as, as these are referred to, because they first appeared, the, the allied colored Battlelands first appeared in Battle for Zendikar. Underrated. I like these cards, and I'm looking forward to Wizards completing the cycle when they do the enemy Battlelands. Don't know when that will be, but this cycle is unheralded. Temple, islands, lots of islands, lots of swamps. Of course, what I what I would want to do is to eliminate as many of the basic land options as possible in order to slip in a field of the dead, so that we had the uh, the possibility of utilizing that to make more zombie creature tokens whenever a land would ETB, as long as we have an active, you know, field of the dead. Here's our Will Help the Rock Cleaver, thick old cardboard <laughs> placeholder, I guess we'll call that. Zombie tokens, and zombie tokens, and more zombies, and that is it. All right, so initial impressions for me of this deck. I think overall, the new cards printed in this deck are extremely powerful. Um, I really do think that there are a lot of really powerful pr new cards in this deck. Reprints, reprints seem to be on a little weaker side for what they could have chosen to put into this deck. Um, I wasn't blown away by the reprints, but I'm absolutely blown away by the new cards in this set. I am particularly... Will Helt is just... Is he now taking the place of the Scarab God? Is he is Will Help knocking the Scarab God off of the throne of the best Demir zombie commander? That's a conversation I want to have with the MTGBC. Let me know in the comment section below if you were sitting down to make, to create, to craft a Demir zombie tribal commander deck. Who would you choose as its general? Will Helt the Rock Cleaver or the Scarab God? This is MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic.